Hello, I'm Wilson Capron, bid smart maker from Cristobal. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be here at the San Angelo Fine, uh, Museum of Fine Arts. Uh, um, growing up, uh, I never really knew what I was going to be. Uh, graduated high school and they said, what are you going to do? I said, well, I guess I'll go to college because that's what you're supposed to do. So I went to college. And, Got done in college and I said, what are you going to do? I said, well, I'm a bid and spur. I'm making bits and spurs. I have a job making bits and spurs. And uh, I wrote. And so that's what I did. Just like Forrest Gump, I just kind of followed my followed my my path that was laid out in front of me. And here I am uh, in, a, in an art museum, which honestly, I didn't start off to be an artist. Uh, my dad, uh, Mike Capron, is, is, is here with me and, and somebody that uh, has... has Educated himself, his life through his life as an artist, and, and uh, I love pop, but I never dreamed I would follow his footsteps. And through his guidance, uh, he he pushed me to embrace art and how that worked into my bits and spurs. And now here you find me in this museum, which honestly I never dreamed that I'd be considered an artist. To continue that, I also am honored to be a member of this effort to understand more about who we are and what we do and why we do it. Um, I was blessed with being um, a man who basically wanted to be an artist forever. Um, I wanted to ride, rope, and paint. That's all I wanted to do. And it didn't matter what, what, uh, which sequence. Um, and so I pursued those endeavors my whole life. And my son was also an individual. I, knew, I learned right away that he was certainly different from me. And he had lots of ability in areas that I didn't have. And so I was interested to see where he was gonna go with it. when he came home from college and he said and I said what's next and he said I want to make bits and spurs and I said I'm glad you went to college I, said, yeah, Ali, I can't imagine why you spent all that time in college you want to make bits and spurs our good friend Greg Darnell who was his mentor who he worked for and so forth where he lived had afforded him the tools to learn how to make in a, in the, all the process, a mental process of making bits and spurs. And so I said, okay, no problem. I like that idea real good. Makes a lot more sense than college. And, but I said, now you have just entered my world. Well, Pop, so I had two silver spoons shoved down my mouth in the beginning, right? Um, Greg Darnell and Pop, and, and I, so I had two men, one a mechanic, mechanical genius and one an artistic genius on each side of me that refused to allow me to make mistakes. I tried all the way along. I mean, Pop said, what are you gonna do now that you graduated college and wasted four and a half years of your time, right? No, I said, well, I, you know, and I didn't leave Greg to become a bit and spur maker. I really didn't, I, I left to come back home and with some bit and spur orders. But as I was doing that, as I started engraving and all, that's when he brought up the art things. So we better start talking about art. And, and uh, I'm like, no, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I don't wanna be a painter. I don't wanna do that. Well, what do you think art is? Art's in everything. It's in every aspect of it. And, and I, it, from, from the beginning, so at that at that same time that Pop is telling me that, as I'm learning to engrave the engraving block we call a ball, it's a ball vise, is that it spins around a circle and has a little ball bottom on it so it wiggles around. Greg always told me, he said, just let the ball do the work. Well, I thought that meant doing the perfectly little round spirals that we call scrolls. I thought that's what that was. I, I didn't realize that I had to be able to draw that scroll and then I had to be able to follow that line. So I soon learned that without the pencil, without if I can't draw with a pencil, I can't cut an engraving block. 
So then all of a sudden I'm thrown right back into his lap of, of how to go about this. So it took a year, two years, and plus 20 years now of learning the mechanics of engraving, right? I'm constantly learning, but in order to be able to follow my line, it probably took a year of poking myself in the hand repeatedly with that little sharp tool. You have 5,000 drawings to make before you can ever start to judge whether you're doing good or not. So you might as well get started. Just, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Just get it down, get, get the information on paper and start to learn. Of course, we want the second drawing to be better than the first drawing, but it's not about drawing the perfect drawing. Is, is, you're not, right? you're not right. focused no, on you're drawing exactly. the perfect drawing. You're focused on trying to get the information down on paper and as you do that again and again and again and again, then all of a sudden it starts to build. And in my bit and spur world, um, just like my my conversation with you about we better start talking about art. And go, Hold on, I'm not an artist. I'm a bit and spur maker. I don't want to be an artist. Well, what the heck do you think you're doing? <laughs> all right. So we as as crafts people, we create in steel, leather whatever ceramics or whatever so here we are confined to this material we believe in my form of expression happens here well if you the craft person if you the craft person will go back to paper and learn how to create your story in paper on paper you will excel far faster and become more talented people say you'll become more accomplished at your at your craft if you will learn how to express yourself on paper, because all I'm doing is pulling out of what's inside of me and putting it in, in steel and silver, and gold. But if, if I can't do it on paper, what the heck makes you think I can do it in steel? not been exposed then you're limited yeah but that's where of course i was love some of my old art teachers axioms about this and i said i don't know no i said i don't like that mr terry she said you don't know what you like what you don't like you haven't been exposed you don't you haven't done your five thousand years you done your five thousand use however many tools you want put however many brush strokes yeah. or not brush strokes on your canvas that you want or in steel whatever but if you don't have a message to your story why the hell tell the story why even bother well, what are you trying to accomplish isn't that what art is is telling the story and and and, and or creating an emotional feeling with inside Air, a, a glass of wine can create a, oh, but if you don't don't just ferment some grapes and call it wine. <laughs> right? That's yeah, it's wine, but who wants that? Let's have let's have let's, there's a reason. Oh, great, the word great, the word master. Um, some people need to tell me that. Some people need to say that about Pa. And, that, and, and I need to allow those people to say those things um, for them. It's for them, not for me. It, of course, I like to get a pat on the back. Of course, I like to be told that I'm good at doing something by my work. And that's the ultimate telling me that I've done good, right? If I can create joy in you, then, then that's great. But as far as like directly affected, uh, directly attached to me as a great bit and spur maker, I'm not too concerned about that. Matter of fact, I'm, I don't, whatever. The first day I showed my mom something, she thought I was great. So if I believed that, I accomplished that the first day. Uh, I'm a very competitive soul. Uh, I, want, I want to win. But what am I trying to win as a great bit and spur maker? What I'm trying to be from a competitive deal is as great as I can be. And it's, and it's the pursuit of perfection. But the deal is, is I'm in pursuit of perfection and I will never get there. And I am not in competition with any other bit and spur maker. I'm not in competition with Pop and his paintings on the wall. That is not what this is about. It is a journey of telling a story. And each and every piece that I do 
for my own satisfaction needs to be growing, needs to be getting closer to that word perfection. But I'll never get there. I mean, it's just, it's not it. So, so thank you for the terms master or the terms great, but that and $2 is going to get me a cup of coffee, right? It, that, that's just for the newspapers and then for social media and things like that. I, I'm not, I, I, I appreciate the words. I appreciate people saying that. I'm honored that they say that, but that's not going to help me be better tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. it's about making somebody happy, mm -hmm. telling their story and getting them connected that way. Mm -hmm. uh, that's very important to me. I, I, that's, mm, you too, with what well, you're doing. I was doing. just thinking about all that. And certainly, mm -hmm. uh, but you find, and I've, I know it's the same with me and my business spirits, is you see something, somebody sees a painting that you've done, and if they can relate to that painting, if there's a story from their past that makes them remember grandpa and his horse and his cow, then they say, oh my gosh, I can, they can live it, right? They can be there. I, that's a very good point in that I have, I did start out in that direction. And I have here lately been revamping, not revamping, but realizing that, that there are some things that have influenced me lately that I'm kind of age-wise touching on. But now here lately, and I was just looking in the mirror, and the mirror is a reflection of so many things and it always inverts and gives us a different angle to see something and so it will twist our impressions to the point of giving us a little fresher look and this happens in the art world a lot so that we don't get our horses out of balance we don't get our people out of balance is that Invariably, we get to draw on the on one side or the other of the brain, so to speak. You get heavy on one side or another. So you look at it, and it gives you a balance of right and wrong. And it also gives you a balance of nature. And here lately, I'm going, you know, I will change something that I would never change, didn't used to change. Um, and it has more to do with the color of the day. Something about colors and daylight and God's world. Well, it, it, so there's divinely, is divinely um, enjoyable. Well, there's going to, I mean, it, blues, right? Singing a blues song. There's some gloom, oh, yeah, there's some gloom in life, life, right? Well, I agree wholeheartedly, and I do some gloomy stuff. So it's just about, uh, like to me as an artist, I don't want to be one-dimensional. I want to I wanna, I wanna be able to tell that gloomy day story. Well, yeah, I but also I want to be able to talk about coming out the other side of the gloomy day and uh, live happily ever after story as well and be able to create those emotions in my, I mean, that's, that's a little far fetched for me to say that in my bits and spurs, but but uh, man, I I relate that relates directly to you and your storytelling on your canvas. Um, but I but I definitely want to be able to tell the California story, the Texas story, the Mexican story, the oh yeah, the, the oh, Spanish yeah. colonial story. I want to be able to as a designer and a, and a and a storyteller, I want to be able to tell all those different yeah. things. There's something about the elusive creative process of creating something so, uh, and I, this has been a question here lately, of back to the doing something great, doing something that you think is great. Um, certainly, I'm a better judge of other people's art than I am my own art. In, in, the, in that respect. But there is a desire now for me to continue to paint, to search for that individual secret of light, day, greatness, some, 
something other than anatomy, something other than a story, something other than some spark. Well, doesn't that doesn't that simply enhance your anatomy and your story and your figures that are going on? Exactly, and this is where me passing judgment on past art, completed art, doesn't have to be dead art, just has to be mm -hmm. completed art. And I really enjoy reflecting on art that has been completed. Not that I want to go there, but it is a matter of appreciating what some guys have done to create their own individual art. And it's not about dynamics. It's not about grandiosa. There's just some little something that goes, wow, that is really, really quality. It's not something tangible. It's, you, you see it every now and then, you go, yeah. And, uh, uh, and I was looking in the mirror, and that's why this whole conversation was going back to that, looking in the mirror, and, and I was going, you know, there's some things there looking at it that I had never seen before that I hadn't been able to identify. <laughs> shop everything that happens in my shop and, and with my business adventures um, has to run through a filter I want to make sure that that whatever it is I do is building for what I want to do tomorrow so what I want to do is is build custom one-of-a-kind bits and spurs and you can call that museum grade you can call it whatever whatever you want but it's 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 the special, it's a special one, two, three month project that it, it takes a considerable amount of time. Um, that's my true passion and fun and love and all that. So everything I do in my shop or outside of my shop is, is I, I, I look at it and I say, okay, is this going to help me? Is this going to help me build towards that future? Uh, we feed off each other so much that indirectly, Every workshop I have influences me, no matter what, mm -hmm. because it reinforces my ethics, reinforces and re-enhances some of these things that he and I will talk about. And I go, well, yeah, you better, you better get back and check your latest endeavors to see if you're adhering to some of those rules uh, design wise he and I do a lot design wise very much the same certainly draftsmanship's a lot similar too so yes all of that is a direct influence on me to make sure that I am keeping up to par and so now I'm kind of really enjoying some of the simple landscapes compared to some of the simple anatomy of so, uh, the stuff I used to, I used to really, really get excited about simple anatomy. So in my new adventures of designing something for the production world, it, it cannot be the, some of the elaborate crap that I do. I, I got to be able to send this to, to a person that can recreate this in a, in a, in a specific time frame, right? Because yeah, okay. this is about time, right? I mean, yeah. we got to be able to produce a lot of this stuff. So, so um, I have to draw simple, but I have to tell a message. I have to decorate. I have to decorate the project to enhance it simply. Mm -hmm. that's, that's so important to me is telling that, those experiences for other people, and incorporating them into the process because of it's about them and their story. It really is. I. I have a successful custom business now because I allow I learn. Well, I don't mean learn, that I need to let people be a part of the puzzle. They need a piece of my heart and they need involved there and, and 
I created ownership in my customer from day one. And I said, this doesn't have to hurt, but you're going to get involved. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs>